My name is Yair Davidi. I'm speaking to you from the land of Israel. Today we are about to speak about David. David, as the forerunner, the prototype, and also the ancestor of the future Messiah who will come and who will save the Jewish people, who will save the ten tribes, and who will redeem all over all of the world. He will bring re redemption to all of humanity. This is mentioned in the Bible several times. And it is an important uh, principle in, Bible, in understanding the Bible. It's a, it is an important uh, foundation in biblical prophecy. It is worth knowing. It is interesting and it is valuable. And it could be very well actual in our time. Who knows? If not in our time, in the time of our children or their children. But it will come. It will come to pass. And it is what we are all hoping for and what... Our beliefs in the Bible are based upon or derive encouragement and sustenance from. It says in the book of Samuel, David was the king of Israel. David became the king of Israel. God was pleased with David overall and God promised David certain things concerning his descendants, concerning the future. And we find in 2 Samuel, Chapter 7, verse 8, Now therefore, so shall you say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, so says the Lord of hosts. I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep. David had been a shepherd one stage. To be ruler over my people, Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make you a great name like the names of the great men who are on the earth. Will also appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them that they may live in their own place and not be disturbed again. Nor will the wicked afflict them more as formerly, even from the day that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also declares to you that the Lord will make a house for you. When your days are complete and you lie down with your fathers, I will raise up your descendants after you. Who will come forth from you and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. This is talking about the future Messiah. Someone will come out of the lines of David, from the descendants of David. And he will establish the kingdom of Israel forever. He will redeem all of mankind. It says, I will be a father to him and he will be a son to me. When he commits iniquity, that is, he is liable to fall down, to commit sin. Or oh, he or someone who went before him of the same lineage, when he commits iniquity, I will correct him with the rod of man and the strokes of the sons of men. And but my loving kindness shall not depart from him as I took it away from the soul whom I removed from before you. Your house and your kingdom shall endure before me forever. Your throne shall be established forever. In accordance with all these words and all these visions, so Nathan spoke to David. And uh, we have this, we have this prophecy, and this concerns the future Messiah. And we are using this work of ours, David and Bathsheba. It is a very good book. It is well worth reading, and it concerns many subjects, including the purported sin that David committed. He didn't actually sin, but as it is represented in the Bible as if he did, and an explanation of what actually happened and how it happened and everything around it and all of the ins and outs, which is worth knowing and uh, which are worth knowing and worth uh, thinking about. And this is what this work is, uh, is occupied with. We also have a chapter in it concerning the prophecy uh, about David and about the future Messiah emerging from David. So to the prophet Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah in chapter 33 prophesied concerning the future Messiah coming out of David. He says, chapter 33, verse 14 onwards, Behold, days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the good word which I have spoken concerning the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and in that time I will cause a righteous branch of David to come forth, and he shall execute justice and righteousness on the earth. In those days Judah, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem shall dwell in safety. And this is the name by which he shall be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Actually in, in Hebrew it says, uh, 
the Lord, Hashem, said Jainal, meaning not only our righteousness, but someone who makes us righteous. So the quality of the future Messiah will be someone who will enable us to do what we have to do. Now we've all in our lifetime, at some, some point or other, we've run into people who were exceptional, had an exceptional influence upon us, even if it was for a few minutes, who, who believed in us, who gave us confidence, who told us what we should do, and they uh, turned out to be right. And... Um, and because of them became uh, better people. It may not happen, have happened very often, but uh, everyone has to some degree has had such an experience. So this is the quality that the future Messiah will have on all of the earth, all of mankind. He will enable people to live in a righteous way. He will have this quality in a greater uh, measure. And it says, Hashem zid kainu, for thus says the Lord, David shall never lack a man to sit on the throne in the house of Israel. And the Levitical priest shall never lack a man before me to offer burnt offerings, to burn grain offerings, and to prepare sacrifices continually. So here we may learn something, that some have understood this verse to say that there will be, always be a ruler from the house of David over Israel. And they say that, uh, that, that uh, they believe, for instance, that the president of Monarch of Britain or the British Commonwealth are also descended from David. And also perhaps uh, the monarchs of... Um, uh, people in Western Europe, some of whom are descended from lost tribes of Israel, or at least the lost tribes of Israel are amongst them, that they too are from the house of David. And now this could well be. There are other grounds, there are, is evidence pointing in this direction. It could well be the case, but it does not necessarily have to be, because we see here that so too the, Levi, the Levites are, are recalled, the Levites and their task of offering up sacrifices in the temple. And we know that they are not doing that. The uh, temple it will be built in the future, will be rebuilt in the future, and there will be sacrifices, and they shall return to do their task. And they are present, they are available. That's what it's saying. They will always be available when the, the situation is right, when we repent, when the situation comes about, to restore what needs to be restored. They will be available to be restored to that situation. So we may learn by an analogy uh, concerning David, that David will always have a descendant of his who will be available to rule over the house of Israel when the house of Israel is worthy of it. Uh, it does not necessarily mean that there will always be someone at the top of the government or the top of the ruling houses descended from David, though this is also a possibility. We're not nullifying this possibility. We're just saying that it is not an absolute re requirement according to the simple meaning of the verses as we understand them. Another point we should mention for people who uh, sometimes listen to Jewish uh, preachers, Jewish talkers, rabbis, or read Jewish works, uh, the name uh, Messiah in Hebrew is Mashiach. Mashiach. It has a, like a hay sound at the end with a little bit of a guttural, guttural in, uh, inclination of Mashiach. Sometimes it becomes stronger, Mashiach. Uh, but all events, Mashiach um, literally means someone who is anointed, someone because uh, the kings of Israel, or David when he became king, was anointed with holy oil. That is what Mashiach means, he who is anointed, he who is appointed. And uh, we, uh, in principle this word is used for different things. Uh, Cyrus, the king of Persia, he was also called in, uh, in Isaiah 45, the anointed of God, because God had anointed it as if to say appointed him for a specific task concerned with the redemption. So to the utensils in the Mikdash, in, in the temple, were also anointed, uh, Mashiach. They are the, have the holy oil placed upon them to dedicate them to the service. Uh, and so we have we have uh, the concept of Mashiach, Mashiach ben David, who is the Mashiach son of David, who is the real Messiah, the eventual Messiah. We also have the concept of Mashiach. Ben Yosef, the son of Mashiach, the Messiah, son of Joseph, who will be a, a subsidiary, a, a, an assistant, as it to say, to, to Mashiach ben David, uh, who will help Mashiach ben David, and he will head the lost ten tribes in the end times, so Mashiach ben Yosef, that is, Messiah, son of Joseph, he will help the lost ten tribes in the end times to return, and he will be instrumental, he will be like an ally, an assistant to Mashiach ben David, and also, in a sense, Mashiach ben Yosef will prepare the way for him. And the Mashiach ben Yosef will apparently come from the, uh, from the fruit of Joseph. Joseph we find amongst Western peoples, especially amongst English-speaking peoples. 
And we see now that we are reaching or getting close to the Messianic age. The Jews are returning to the land. They are starting to build up the land of Israel. Uh, and they have been assisted, at first by Great Britain, that enabled the Jews to return, the Balfour Declaration and the early mandate, British Mandate, helping Jews to settle in the land of Israel. And after that, when the State of Israel declared its independence and established itself, it has been helped very strongly and very intensively by... By, uh, by the USA, and both the USA and Britain have elements within them who are descended uh, uh, from through physical descent from uh, the Lost Ten Tribes, especially from the tribes of Joseph. So this is uh, worth noting, as we have spoken about, this is what we do, this is what our organization has dedicated itself to, to do. That's what I do, is spread word concerning this identity of the Lost Tribes in our time, and their task according to the Bible. We also find a possible indication concerning the future Messiah in the blessing of Jacob to his sons. Jacob is also known as Israel. Jacob had Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Jacob was renamed Israel. Jacob had 12 sons from the 12 sons of Jacob of Israel uh, came the 12 tribes. And when he was dying, Jacob uh, gathered, uh, called all of his sons together, and he gave them a blessing. And this blessing concerned what will happen, what would occur in the end times, is expressly says in Genesis 49, verse 1. And Jacob called his sons together and said, Gather together them and tell you what shall be for you in the last days, what will happen during the end times. This is what Jacob said, and this is what he prophesied. And concerning Judah, concerning Judah, he said, uh, 49, verses 8 to 9. Judah, you are he whom your brothers shall acknowledge. It says, uh, translators praise, but uh, actually your ducha, they, in Hebrew, they shall acknowledge the righteousness of, the, 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 the correctness of, acknowledge your ducha. Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's children shall bear down before you. Judah is a lion's whelp from the plain, my son, you have gone up. He bows down, he lies down as a lion, and as a lion, who shall rouse him? And he goes on, verse 10, The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh comes. Shiloh apparently is a reference to the future Messiah, and to him shall be the obedience of the people. Binding his donkey to the vine, and his donkey's colt to the choice vine, he washed his gra garments in wine, his clothes in the blood of grapes. His eyes are darker than wine, and his teeth whiter than milk. And uh, so this is it. This was our, these verses are concerned the future Messiah who will come and will bring about the future redemption and all the peoples of the earth shall acknowledge him, but it will shall go in stages. First, uh, the people of Judah shall acknowledge the, the um, Messiah, son of David. Then the other tribes shall acknowledge him. Then the whole world will acknowledge him. This is mentioned in, in, in the Bible and this is what we're speaking about. Well, another point is that the Messiah comes in these verses in the Hebrew, Till Shiloh comes unto him shall be the obedience of the people. Lo yikad anem, according to the uh, niceties of the language, it can also be understood to mean that he will give the uh, the, the tribal signification of, the, of all of the people, of all of the tribes. And uh, this is also found in uh, Malachi uh, chapter 3, as it says the Maimonides. Maimonides was a great Jewish rabbi. He lived in the 1200s. He wrote a book uh, summarizing all of the biblical laws and all of the Talmudic explanations of the laws. Uh, he, and this book is very important. And in his work he says, In the time of the King Messiah, when his kingdom shall be settled and all is are gathered unto him, he will establish the family relationship of everyone according to the divine spirit of inspiration upon him. As it says, And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he begins with the tribe of Levi, and it says, And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them, Malachi 3.3. 3. And he only establishes a family relationship over Israel according to their tribes, and makes known who belongs to these tribes and who belong to that one. In other words, the Messiah will tell each and every one of the Israelites which tribe they belong to, because most people will not know, will not be certain of what tribe they belong to. They may feel within them, and even that they, of that they're not certain. They may believe that they are descended from Israel, that they are Israelites, but specifically what tribe they belong to, we, they will not know. There are Jews today who, for instance, are Le Levi's, uh, probably, almost certainly, from the tribe of Levi. At least in most cases, Cohen's also from the tribe of Levi. We have different family names who are descended from Levi, associated with Levi. So they are probably 
uh, belong to the tribe of Levi. Also, people have uh, traditions that they are descended from the house of David, so they belong to Judah. We have others from other branches of David. We have traditions here and there. I knew, I know a rabbi who has a family tradition that he descends from the tribe of Benjamin. So these people exist. Uh, there may be a lot of them, but most people, even Jews, do not know or are not certain which tribe they belong to, especially those from the lost tribes of Israel who did not even know they were Israelites, did not know that they were Israelites, and we're helping them to realise that, to return, to, to rediscover, to be convinced once again of their ancestry, at least to take the initial steps in that direction. And we can tell them in general to a certain degree of certainty or a certain degree of assurance that they are almost certainly descended from Israelites. Uh, but even that, we cannot guarantee it uh, to 100%. And we cannot tell them uh, each, which specific tribe they belong to. So the Messiah will do that or we will set up a process that will encompass that, this, uh, this uh, letting the tribal affiliation of each individual Israelite be known unto them. Isaiah chapter 11 also speaks of the Messiah. Isaiah chapter 11, beginning from verse 1, Then a shoot will spring from the stem of Jesse. Jesse, or Yeshua, Jesse was the father of, of David. Uh, seed of Saint, the seed, the, the, the offspring of Jesse, is another name for David. House of Jesse is also a name for the house of David. Uh, and he says, a shoot shall spring from the stem of Jesse, and a branch from his roots will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and strength. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord, and he will not judge by what his eyes see, nor make a decision. But what his ears hear, but with righteousness he will judge the poor and decide with fairness for the afflicted of the earth. And he will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Also righteousness will be the belt about his loins and faithfulness the belt about his waist. And the wolf will dwell with the lamb and the leopard will lie down with the young goat and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together and the little boy will lead them also the cow and the bear will graze the young will lie down together and the lion will eat straw like the ox. Nursing child will play by the hole of the cobra and the weaned child will put his hand on the wiper's den. They will not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. For the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Then in that day the nations will resort to the root of Jesse, that is David, who will stand as a signal for the peoples and his fitting place will be glorious. Uh, Maimonides in, uh, describes uh, elsewhere in, uh, in, the, in his book, uh, more in the book, in the Guide to the Perplexed, and also other, other commentators also add to this that this does not necessarily mean that literally wild beasts, lions and tigers and wolves and bears will suddenly become vegetarians. It is a, a parable, a parable that, that the wicked nature of man will be curtailed, it will be uh, restrained, it will be redirected in a positive direction. And the Messiah will be the head of this movement. He will enable it or be a, a channel through which it comes to pass. Another point is that the Messiah must come from the seed of Solomon. Why do we say this? Because David had, he had at least six wives, maybe more. He had at least 20 children, maybe many more. And uh, they also, being royalty and uh, in those days, polygamy, having more than one wife was permitted, so they would have also had uh, quite a few wives. So uh, we, you never can tell, but it could be that a lot, lot, great number of people uh, in each generation having more and more people, more and more people in each generation means that a great number of people could be descended from David, and David himself had a large number of descendants. Nevertheless, his, uh, the one who reigned after him was King Solomon. Solomon was his son, and it was promised that the Messiah would come through the seed of Solomon. As we find in 1 Chronicles 22, 9, Behold, a son will be born to you, and who shall be a man of rest, and I will give him rest from all his enemies on every side, for his name shall be Solomon, and will give peace and quiet to Israel in his days. He shall build a house for my name, and he shall be my son, and I will be his father. And I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. And again, in 2 Chronicles 7, 18, Then I will establish your royal throne as I covenanted 
with your father David, saying, You shall not lack a man to be ruler in Israel. Solomon was promised, was promised to Solomon that through him we come the seed of the future Messiah. Also in Jeremiah verse chapter 3 we have in those days and at that time will cause a righteous branch of David to spring forth as we read, but this is also worth not knowing, and he should execute justice and the righteousness on the earth. In those days Judah shall be saved and Jerusalem will dwell in safety, and this is the name by which he shall be called. she shall be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Also again in Zechariah 9, and nine, uh, nine, rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion, and shout and triumph, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and endowed with salvation, humble and mounted on a donkey, even on a colt, the foal, the foal of a donkey. And in Jeremiah 23, we have verse 5 onwards. Behold, the days are coming, and declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he will reign as king and act wisely and do justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah shall be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. And this is a name which he will be called the Lord our righteousness, Hashem Zid Kano, that is the one who enables us to do righteousness, to be righteous. He will help us to overcome the weaknesses, the inherent weaknesses, and, and giving in to temptation that we are all uh, liable to fall down because of, and we probably have done so to some degree or other, each and every one of us in his own way. Uh, it goes on, behold, in verse 7, behold, that the days are coming, said it declares the Lord, when they will no longer say, the Lord lives to brought up the sons of Israel from the land of Egypt. But as the Lord lives to brought up and led back the descendants of the household of Israel from the north land and from the countries where I have driven them, then they will live on their own soil. This is called earlying the Lost Hand tribe, so will also return from the North Land together with Judah in the end times. Also it says in Hosea 3 verse 5, after which the children of Israel return, here's uh, Hosea here, here also referring to Lost Hand tribes, as we see from the context of what he is speaking of and from the whole work of Hosea. He says, after which the children of Israel, there's Lost Hand tribes return and seek their Lord their God and David their king shall come trembling unto the Lord and to his goodness in the end of days. And there's a Midrash, it is a rabbinical, uh, early rabbinical tradition, that this is referring to the lost end times and that they will return in the end times and they will acknowledge David as their king and be reconciled with Judah. Another point is that our repentance, we have to do repent. If we repent, we can bring about the, the future redemption. Each and every one of us can do what he can, do as well as he can. And through repentance, we work on ourselves and also work on our surroundings and we have an influence, believe it or not, and repentance helps. And David himself did repentance. David uh, sinned, he, according to the simple meaning of the Bible, in 2 Samuel 12, David took the wife of one of his soldiers slept with her, got her pregnant, tried to delude Uriah, his soldier, tried to get him to sleep with his wife so that he think that, that the child was his. And when Uriah did not do it, David uh, gave uh, orders that Uriah should be set up in the front line and killed. And Uriah indeed was killed. And afterward David took uh, this woman, Bathsheba, uh, we talk about it, we speak about it in this work, Bathsheba, concerning Bathsheba. Nathan, Nathan the prophet came to David and he rebuked David and David uh, had to be punished for it. And David repented and his repentance was accepted. And uh, we see from this that since David had could do a sin so grievous, so bad, at least on the simple level, then so, and he could be absolved, he could be forgiven for what he had done, so can we. There's always hope we can come back. Uh, actually, when we examine what happened according to the biblical verses in the Hebrew and different verses uh, uh, showing from one verse, uh, comparing one verse to another, going very deeply into what happened into the situation, we see it wasn't exactly that way. The woman wasn't really the wife of the person concerned um, and he was, didn't really try and delude him, also he didn't really cause him to be killed, 
but he did not act as he should have acted and in the eyes of the people he could have taken the 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 impression could have given the impression of having been as the simple meaning of the verses at a, on the, at least on the first initial superficial impression would lead us to understand that David had uh, committed adultery with another man's wife and also murdered that person and taken his wife. Uh, uh, and it wasn't exactly that way, as this book analyzes the situation and shows what happened. Nevertheless, it was not correct and it was done in such a way that people would have thought it was as it, it seemed to be which was very bad, and so David was punished as if he had done what it had seemed to be that he was doing. Uh, this is, uh, you have to read the book and understand what I'm talking about, but that is another subject. At all events, David is depicted as having grievously sinned and ha having repented of his sin, and having been forgiven for his sin, and this is an example for us all that we too may be forgiven for our sins. We find in Psalms 51, verse 1, Have mercy upon me, O God, have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is always before me against you. You only have I sinned, and have done this evil in your sight that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. God punishes. He punishes everyone for sinning. No matter who you are, what you have done, you get punished and you also get rewarded. This is the way the world works. This is the way things go. David was a king in the past, 2 Samuel 8, 8 15. So David reigned over all his own. David administered judgment and justice to his people. And David will be the king in the future, which it says, Ezekiel 37, verse 24 onwards, David, my servant, shall be king over them. They shall all have one shepherd. They shall also work, walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. Then they shall dwell in the land that I have given to Jacob, my servant, where your fathers dwelt. And they shall dwell there, they, their children, and their children's children forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. And it shall be an everlasting covenant with them. And I will establish them and multiply them. And I will set my sanctuary in the worry in their midst forevermore. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Indeed, I will be their God and they shall be my people. The nations also shall know that I, the Lord, sanctify yourself when my sanctuary is in their midst forevermore. So do in Jeremiah 23. Verse 5 onwards, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will raise to David a branch of righteousness. Kings shall reign and prosper and execute judgment and righteousness in the earth. In his days, Judah shall be saved and Israel will dwell safely. And this is the name which you will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. As we have said previously, the Lord is our righteousness in Canaan in Hebrew, meaning the Lord enables us to do righteousness to go along the right way, along the right track. So this is it. The future Messiah will be the sin of David, the future Messiah will help us, he will help all of us, he will also help all over the world, he will help the Israelite peoples, it goes in stages, first he will, it seems, according to the sources, he will help Judah, he will help Judah return to the Torah, he will help Judah become independent of the enemies, he will re-establish re -establish the kingdom of Judah, as it should have been, and also, and also, he will help uh, bring back the lost ten tribes, and he will help uh, all of mankind go in the right way, he will do what has to be done. May this happen well, and may we deserve to be part of it, to partake of this. May the Lord God of Israel bless you all. Thank you.